Les savoirs autochtones et locaux Local and indigenous knowledge is a major question today for the management of biodiversity, for its knowledge and for its conservation. We, it's no longer a matter of opposing, pitting against each other, science and uh, Western science and development uh, that knows everything and local populations that know nothing and who must be told what to do. Nowadays, we're talking more about uh, cooperation, complementarity of systems which uh, acknowledge the legitimacy of all knowledge systems, and we're going towards co-management and even co-production of knowledge between local populations and scientists. Three major documents, but there are many more, are worth mentioning. Article 8J of the uh, Convention on Biodiversity, 1992, I quote, we must preserve, conserve the knowledge, including in the innovation because they uh, personify traditional ways of life and are highly interesting for conservation and sustainable preservation of uh, biodiversity. There is also an important document, uh, 2010, the Protocol of Nagoya, managing uh, the access to genetic resources, trying to uh, avoid biopiracy, trying to stop people from patenting uh, living organisms without taking into consideration the traditional rights of those uh, populations who already were aware of those resources uh, previously. And 2013, the IPBS, an intergovernmental platform, which has to do with ecosystemic services, biodiversity renders a lot of services to mankind. And again, in an article, it says that it's important to acknowledge and recognize the contribution made by uh, indigenous populations and uh, th through their knowledge. What, what about this knowledge? Complex systems of knowledge, know-how, practical know-how, and representations. Another code of ethics, another vision of the world. Knowledge and representations uh, cannot be separated in most uh, traditional populations, whereas in our Western Society, science is a separate domain. Science is about living beings, the living world, and there are also other activities that have to do with biodiversity. The knowledge is divided by gender and age. Men, women, children don't do the same thing, don't know the same things, and they have complementary knowledge. Another main question is the erosion of knowledge uh, in, the in, the con in the modern world. Because this kind of knowledge is learned by imitating previous generations. The knowledge is incorporated. People naturally learn to do things in a certain way, and also the knowledge is transmitted orally, whereas uh, written knowledge and knowledge taught in school is not necessarily appropriate, and sometimes there are transmission problems. This terminology provides many different uh, terms, and uh, I simply want you to know what you're talking about. Local knowledge is the uh, most general word. Traditional ecological knowledge, TEK, is one of the very first definitions uh, re regarding traditional ecological knowledge. But uh, then somebody tried to uh, come up with a different definition, saying autochtone in French, indigenous in English and local, and finally only indigenous knowledge. But this is a very rich field of uh, research, uh, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, because many different uh, scientific disciplines work together, and populations uh, who hold this knowledge, uh, participate. It might be fishermen very close to where you live or uh, indigenous populations in remote countries. Traditional knowledge is therefore extremely accurate 
que les régions désertiques ou que la banquise sont People believe that euh, the desert or the ice flow are sans, sterile sans environments where nothing happens and there is no biological wealth, whereas the populations les, living in those areas, in those environments, know and exploit the biological wealth and think about this biological wealth. 93% of the local flora is known by the uh, population in the Philippines, and many populations have have uh, acquired uh, knowledge, they have uh, denominated uh, living beings and classified living beings in their local, not in the local language, with popular taxonomies, uh, indigenous taxonomies that work according to the same uh, organization as our scientific taxonomy. There have been prejudiced ideas which despise indigenous knowledge. And according to those ideas, we only know what we are acquainted with and nothing that is uh, not of practical interest is known. But Lévi-Strauss uh, made the contrary demonstration and he said that precisely because we are interested by something and we study it, we acquire the necessary knowledge for this thing to become useful. So at a second stage, at a later stage, we decide to use what we have learned to know. Tradition to be kept alive must be also transferred uh, in modernity. All populations live in the 21st century in a world which is a modern world, and we have no other option. It's not a matter of choosing between tradition and modernity. Today's populations are reinterpreting what was given to them by their ancestors and the knowledge that was forwarded to them. Two final examples so that you understand. Indicators used are used by many different uh, populations in order to understand when exactly an event is going to take place and how you're supposed to react. Some populations don't use calendars, so winter, summer may come earlier or later. So they, for instance, observe uh, the flowers. In the James Bay, when a certain type of flower is in bloom, then they know, the Indians know, that the fish is going to come up the river and uh, there will be many fishes available and they will be there to be caught. Johannes studied during his whole life the traditional knowledge held by fishermen in the Pacific, and he says that uh, Almost every basic fisheries conservation measures devised in the West much later were in use in the tropical Pacific centuries ago. And so they knew things long before we devised them, including in the field of biodiversity.